dear students in your previous classes we discussed about classification of amino acids structure of proteins etc in today's class let us discuss about synthesis of amino acids some important methods for the synthesis of amino acids now let us discuss about a new term isoelectric point in one of your previous classes we discussed about zwitter ion zwitter ion is formed from amino acid so this is a uh, this is the structure of an amino acid it is having an acidic group and a basic group so for the formation of a zwitter ion a proton from acidic coh group will transfer to basic nh2 group so forming a structure like this rch co minus nh3 plus that means when h plus will move from here it will become co minus then when h plus will transfer to this nh2 plus sorry nh2 this nh2 becomes nh3 plus so there will be there will be the formation of zwitter ion a zwitter ion is a dipolar ion it is having both negative charge and a positive charge that we already discussed so depending on the ph of the solution the amino acid in the zwitter ion form can donate or accept a proton so this is a zwitter ion so depending upon the ph of the solution means ph means hydrogen ion concentration so depending upon the ph of the solution an amino acid zwitter ion that means amino acid can exist in the zwitter ion form it can either accept a proton or donate a proton that we are going to discuss about so in fairly acidic medium that means acidic medium means the medium will have low ph an amino acid is more likely to exist in structure 2 and hence in an electric field the ion will migrate towards the negative electrode so consider the uh, medium of the solution as low ph medium that means acidic medium in fairly acidic medium that means the medium is having low ph the medium will have high h plus ion concentration so this zwitter ion will accept proton and forming that means h plus ion will be accepted by the co minus part and form cooh this will remain as such so a cation is formed due to the low ph of the medium so this is a structure of low ph zit uh, amino acid that means when the amino acid is in a low ph solution that means acidic solution it will have a structure like this that means a cationic structure so it can move towards negative electrode when we apply electric field similarly when uh, when we place the amino acid in a basic solution that means it is having uh, in a basic solution it, it will have high ph so in a basic solution there will be high concentration of oh minus so this oh minus will take up by this h plus ion from this nh3 plus part so forming water water will get eliminated so this becomes nh2 h plus will uh, will be donated by this zwitter ion to oh minus so this becomes nh2 so the structure will be a negative ion structure so this can uh, this is uh, this ion is having the ability to migrate towards the positive electrode so in a high ph or acidic medium the uh, the amino acid is having a cationic structure and in a high ph or basic medium amino acid is having a negative ion structure that means anionic structure and will migrate towards positive electrode 
but there is a certain condition that means at a intermediate pH. We already discussed about low pH and high pH median condition. So there will be an inter intermediate pH condition. So at a certain p intermediate pH, the amino acid will exist as the zeter ion 1 with no net charge and hence will show any preferential movement towards cathode or anode. This pH is called isoelectric point of the amino acid. This is the characteristic of a given amino acid. That means at an intermediate pH, the amino acid will exist as the trion form. It will have both a negative part and positive part. So it will not show any preferential migration towards positive electrode or negative electrode. That means it is having both positive and negative part. So that particular pH is called the isoelectric point of the amino acid. This is the characteristic of an amino acid means each amino acid is having a particular isoelectric point. So that is about, uh, that's all about isoelectric point. Yeah. So let us define what is isoelectric point. It is the pH at which an amino acid zeterion carries no net charge and hence shows no tendency to migrate either towards the cathode or the anode when placed in an electric field is known as isoelectric point of the amino acid. So this is the structure of amino acid, sorry, uh, the S yes, amino acid, amino acid can exist in a zeterion form. So at a particular pH, the amino acid shows no migration either towards cathode or anode. That particular pH is known as isoelectric point of the amino acid. That means when we place an amino acid in a electric field, it will never show any migration either towards cathode or anode. So that particular pH in which uh, the amino acid shows neither shows any migration towards cathode or anode that particular pH is known as isoelectric point of the amino acid. So actually um, uh, isoelectric point is not a point, it is a p, it is the pH, not a point, it is the pH at which amino acid neither migrates uh, uh, towards cathode or anode when we place it in a electric field. So we don't, you don't think, you don't consider it as a point, always think it is a pH. Then here we have uh, the isoelectric points of some amino acids. The isoelectric points of neutral amino acids, alanine, phenylalanine and proline are 6.1, 5.5, 6.3 respectively, near, near to 7, the neutral pH. The isoelectric points of acidic amino acids uh, acidic amino acids example aspartic acid glutamic acid they are 2.8 and 3.2 respectively similar to uh, the acidic pH then isoelectric points of the basic amino acids lysine and arginine are 9.7 and 10.8 greater than 7 the basic amino acids for basic amino acids so this is uh, about isoelectric point. Now we are going to discuss about synthesis of amino acids. There are several methods for the synthesis of amino acids. Here we are going to discuss about two important methods. One is structure synthesis, another one is amino malonate synthesis. In your syllabus, we have only uh, these two methods, Strecker synthesis and amino malonate synthesis. One more method is given in your textbook that you uh, then you don't to, you don't need to learn about that method. So first synthesis method is Strecker synthesis. In Strecker synthesis of amino acids, what we are doing is an aldehyde when 
treated with a mixture of ammonium chloride and sodium cyanide or potassium cyanide gives the corresponding alpha amino nitride which upon acidic hydrolysis yields the corresponding amino acids so this method involves the treatment of aldehyde with a mixture of ammonium chloride and sodium cyanide instead of sodium cyanide we can use potassium cyanide also first we will get an alpha amino nitride an addition product which on acidic hydrolysis finally we will get amino acid so let us discuss about the chemical reaction for strucker synthesis so in strucker synthesis a mixture of ammonium chloride and sodium cyanide will react with an aldehyde so first the mixture of ammonium chloride and sodium cyanide will together react and form ammonia and hcn plus sodium chloride this ammonia and hcn will act as reactants in further reaction that means this ammonia and hcn will react with aldehyde so in the first step uh, uh, aldehyde will react with ammonia and forming an aldehyde a molecule of water will get eliminated from here that means h2 from here and oxygen from here will get uh, will get react together and eliminated as water molecule then forming ch double bond nh an aldehyde is formed so an aldehyde and ammonia will react together and forming an aldehyde so in the second step this hcn will react so in the first step ammonia will react and the second step hcn will react these two reactants are produced in the first step that means from the reaction of ammonium chloride and sodium cyanide so when hcn will react with this aldehyde this double bond double bonded uh, pi electrons this pi electrons will uh, move to this nh so this will become nh minus so on this nh minus this h plus will added up so forming nh2 so on this ch plus when this electrons pi electrons move to this nh this becomes nh minus and this ch becomes ch plus so on this ch on on this ch plus this cn minus will added up so forming an alpha amino nitride rch nh2 this becomes nh2 and this becomes ch cn so ch nh2 cn alpha amino nitride then this alpha amino nitride on acidic hydrolysis we will get alpha amino acid that means this cn becomes coh so there will be an acidic group and amino group on the alpha carbon so this is alpha amino there will be sorry there is an amino group on the alpha carbon alpha carbon means a carbon atom next to a uh, coh functional group so this is alpha amino acid so let us uh, discuss some examples when formaldehyde on reaction with ammonia first forms an aldehyde which on uh, further reaction with hcn we will get two amino ethane nitride and uh, an amino nitride which on acidic hydrolysis we will get glycine so uh, in your exams uh, question may be like this suggest a method for the synthesis of glycine so you have to start from formaldehyde and ammonia uh, formaldehyde with formaldehyde with what a mixture of ammonium chloride and sodium cyanide this will produce ammonia and hcn plus nacl so in the first step formaldehyde will react with ammonia and forming an aldehyde which on further reaction with hcn forming an amino nitrile which on acidic hydrolysis we will get glycine then another example acetaldehyde on reaction with a mixture of ammonium chloride and sodium cyanide that means acetaldehyde on reaction with ammonia forming an aldehyde which on acid uh, which on further reaction with hcn forming an amino nitrile which on acidic hydrolysis forming alanine so Uh, another question suggest a method for the synthesis of 
alani so you have to start from what you have to start from acetaldehyde acetaldehyde on reaction with a mixture of ammonium chloride and sodium cyanide we will get alani so you have to write the equations so this is about the strucker synthesis for the synthesis of amino acids next is the amino malonate synthesis in this synthesis diethyl malonate also known as malonic ester is treated with hno2 nitrous acid and the product is reduced with hydrogen in the presence of nickel to get diethyl amino malonate then this is acetylated with acetyl chloride and treated with sodium ethoxide to get a carbon carbanion then the carbanion is immediately made to react with the required alkyl or aralkyl halide to get alkyl or aralkyl substituted acetamido malonic ester then alkaline hydrolysis followed by acidification yields an alpha amino dicarboxylic acid which being unstable undergoes thermal decomposition to yield the corresponding amino acid so this involves a number of steps so let us know the chemical reaction so the chemical reaction involves the treatment of diethyl malonate or malonic ester with nitrous acid that means hno2 malonic acid uh, is cooh ch2 cooh its ester is cooh ch5 ch2 cooh ch5 that means diethyl malonate so uh, when this di diethyl malonate or malonic ester on reaction with hno2 nitrous acid the reaction occurs like this that means in the middle carbon uh, the reaction occurs like this ch2 plus hno2 this is a structure of hno2 so the middle carbon will react with hno2 like this and eliminate a molecule of water so forming a c double bond n oh so which on this compound on further reaction with hydrogen in the presence of nickel that means this compound on reduction a molecule of water will get eliminated that means uh, in the middle carbon there occurs reduction this carbon becomes ch nh2 so forming diethyl amino malonate then this compound on acetylation with acetyl chloride that means when we, uh, when this compound on treating with acetyl chloride this cl of acetyl chloride on reaction with this h of nh2 group eliminating a molecule of hcl then this co c3 part will get attached on this nh in the middle carbon so forming diethyl acetyl amino malonate then this on treating with sodium ethoxide sodium ethoxide on reaction with this uh, diethyl acetyl amino malonate what happens is that this bond becomes uh, c minus and h plus then this h plus will react with this c2 or c2 h5 o minus this uh, sodium ethoxide will exist as c2 h5 o minus and n na plus so this c2h5o- will react with this h+ plus and uh, uh, and a molecule of uh, ethanol will get eliminated then then this na+ plus will uh, attach to this c- minus. that means a carbanion like this will form then this carbanion will undergo alkylation by eliminating sodium bromide that means uh, CH3Br on reaction with this carbanion this CH3 will uh, attach to this that means uh, this will exist as CH3 plus and Br minus this CH3 plus will attach to this C minus and Na plus will attach to this Br minus and NaBr will get eliminated so forming an acetamido alkyl substituted acetamido malonic ester 
here an alkyl group will get attached so an, an uh, alkyl substituted acetamido malonic acid will form which on uh, further alkaline hydrolysis for, followed by acidification undergo that means uh, this co compound on uh, first alkaline hydrolysis and uh, acidification uh, this uh, alkyl substituted acetamido malonic acid undergo alkaline hydrolysis followed by acidification uh, forming an alpha amino dicarboxylic acid that means this ester part uh, these two ester part will become coh under uh, by uh, hydrolysis and this uh, nhco uh, ch3 becomes nh2 so a dicarboxylic amino alpha amino dicarboxylic acid will form then uh, we know that when two carboxyl groups are uh, attached when uh, that means when two carboxyl groups attach on the same carbon atom this uh, compound will become unstable so uh, it will eliminate a molecule of carbon dioxide and forming uh, an alpha amino acid the, uh, here we have alpha sorry uh, alanine we have the compound alanine obtained from diethyl malonate so we have lots of steps in the uh, amino malonic uh, ester synthesis sorry amino malonate synthesis so first uh, we have to treat the uh, diethyl malonate that means malonic ester with nitrous acid it will uh, form a compound uh, like this by the elimination of water molecule then which one further reduction with uh, nickel uh, diethyl amino malonate will form that means central carbon will get reduced which one further acetylation with acetyl chloride and diethyl acetyl amino malonate uh, will form uh, by the elimination of HCl. Then which one further re uh, reaction with sodium ethoxide a molecule of uh, ethanol will get eliminated and forming a carbanion. This carbanion will again react with uh, an alkyl halide and so forming an alkyl substituted acetamido malonic ester. Which one further alkaline hydrolysis followed by acidification forming an alpha amino dicarboxylic acid which is uh, usually uh, unstable and undergo thermal decomposition with the, form, uh, with the elimination of carbon dioxide forming an alpha amino acid here we, uh, we got alanine alanine is nothing but uh, a derivative of uh, glycine glycine is CH2 NH2COH from glycine one of the uh, hydrogen is uh, replaced by CH3 we will get alanine so these are two important synthesis methods for the amino acids one is tracker synthesis another one is amino malonate synthesis these are two important methods means uh, this question uh, will uh, come uh, usually come uh, comes in your exams university exam so you had to write the chemical uh, uh, write and practice the chemical reactions then only you will get the um, chemical reaction in your exams so that's all about the synthesis of amino acids thank you